guys. Alright, so let's talk about this projectile motion business. Hey, take take that so you can copy down the answers as we go along. Alright? Where are my legal givers today? Always, when you come in on day one, always ask for legal giving. Yeah, you can do it today. Yeah. And then Lot Tyro can do it too. Okay, let's talk about this. What is the overall shape of projectile motion? This will go quick into these and we did it with Jennifer. It's a parabolic shape, very good. Let's talk about why it's parabolic though. Okay? Why is it parabolic? So we did a few types of motion already this year. We talked about motion with constant velocity. And that's what Velocity as well. No, we did not. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody find his his Lego bit, the Lego thing, and take like five Legos. Like, I only have five. <laughs> well, you just said that something falls at a constant rate. Acceleration, though. Huh? I had negative. I had gravity. Yeah, yeah, gravity. 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 So, as I was saying, we did motion with constant velocity, which is something just kind of moves at a constant rate. We did motion, motion with constant acceleration, which is something like stopping, right? Or that, free fall, would be motion with constant acceleration. All right? Projectile motion has both things. It has, in one direction, uh, in one direction, all right, it has motion with constant velocity. So, in the x direction, if you ignore air resistance, which normally doesn't really happen in real life, there is air resistance. But yes, you're coming. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, if you ignore air resistance, okay? She's like, I'm gonna stay all period out here. Uh, now we're doing the lecture. All right. So if you and we're just talking about number one, describe the overall shape of the jack Um If you ignore air resistance. In this direction, it's been going to nothing is going to accelerate or slow it down. There's nothing there to do it. An object cannot change. Newton said, "We're going to learn about this in the next topic." By the way, today is the first day of projectile motion, which means we've got to go home today and start studying the next chapter, which is chapter five dynamics. Okay, except for this chapter, uh, yes, dynamics, first chapter five. Now, in between, there's a test. All right, so you also have to start reviewing for the test. All right, go over the GLQs. Go over conceptual questions from the back of the book. Visit the physics classroom and do the tutorials and the practices which are there. Be smart. Do not look back at the practices that you took in master physics and see the parts you got wrong. See if you can get them right this time. See if you understand why you got them wrong. Right? Review the GLQ answers that we did in class. Make sure you understand everything. Form study groups. Get together. Prepare for that test. All right? Now. It's in the calendar. It's coming up. In this direction, then, there's nothing to slow it down. Newton said, you cannot change the motion pattern of an object, right, without a force acting on it. So what force is acting in the x direction if you take out air resistance? Nothing. And therefore, I've got to what? Keep going the way it's going. But in the y direction, right, as the projectile is falling or being launched up, it's just free fall. Gravity is going to be working in this direction. So what happens because of that, because the rate at which it's going forward is always the same, but then the rate at which it goes up and down changes, you get that kind of shape, right? Now let's talk about the, come with the things about that shape, all right? How is projectile motion different from ballistics? Ballistics is when you have a, a like a, a rocket that you're launching, but in the rocket, you have an engine that's keep pushing the thing as it goes, it's in the air. Are you with me what I'm saying? So now, now you have propulsion, and therefore you're going to have X acceleration as well. Are you with me? This doesn't have that. Once it's off your hands, it's, in a, it, it's up to gravity to slow it down and speed it up in the Y direction, and the X direction is going to keep going the same. Once the quarterback lets the ball go, can he change the destiny of the ball? No, we can use the force, he can pray, but it's off his hands at that point. Now it's all about the right receiver. Right? By the way, did you guys stop and think about those of you who try 
to get some of that math right. All right? It's hard. Did you ever try to think about that our brains just calculate that instinctively? Right? You with me, I'm saying? Catch that. <laughs> you, did, you did pretty good. You did pretty good. <laughs> Catch that. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's fine. Throw it against me. So it's a projectile watch that it, it, we're so used to. It. It's something that's so common to us. And I'm basically building my law. Sorry, you had a comment. Yes. All right. So you know how you said that the ball player, the quarterback can't change the direction of the ball. Right? Unless you're Tom Brady, you can fake the ball, then you know, you're already set. You already know what the power is. Uh, that's true. If you're Tom Brady, there's one thing also. Can the ball. Shit, okay. Those of you who play baseball should only answer this question. Who plays baseball? Okay. All right? Let me ask the question. Can the ball's trajectory be modified by forces mid -end? Can the ball, once, once you let go, is it going a straight, necessarily going in a straight line? No. Why? The way it spins creates fluid dynamics with the air, and that ball literally flies like an airplane, and it can actually cut through the air. I have a video about this I'm going to show you guys later, right? But you actually can change the motion pattern because of that. But that's different. And we're not talking about anything rotating, cutting through the air. It's like there's no air, no air resistance. And in that sense, that's the case. Now, compare the X components of projectile motion. Describe the motion velocity and the acceleration. So let's, let's, let's do that. So when I call on you, I just want you to tell me one thing, right? So let's start with the X direction. One, describe what would you call the motion that's happened in the X direction? Give me a name for that kind of motion. Motion with what? Just the x direction. What kind of motion is it? How is it moving in the x direction? Positive? Okay, what, what kind of motion? Is it accelerating? Is it not accelerating? It's, how, what would you call it? There's a chapter name that we covered it. Just the x direction though, not, the, not this, right? There's a motion with constant velocity, that's what I'm looking for. Now, which means, what is the velocity doing, Juan, in the x-direction? Staying the same. What about acceleration in the x-direction? There is no acceleration, right? Okay, you can give him a label, tentatively. All right, what about the y-direction, Bianca? What would you call the motion in the y-direction? It's from the quiz. Hmm? The motion in the y-direction. Oh, free fall. Free fall. All right, Elizabeth, what does it mean to be free fall in terms of velocity? What's happening to velocity in the y-direction? Let's say I threw it out. What happens to the velocity? Oh, no, 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 it goes How? I, okay. Yes, it goes up. Okay. But what happens to the velocity as it goes up? It increases. Like, it what? Increases? It increases? I mean, that's the other option, right? But think about, before you answer something, think. How is that increasing velocity? You can see it even slowed down so much that it actually stops. So, when you're throwing something up, gravity acts against it, and then what? It slows down. But then what happens after it gets to the top? It stops, and then what? Turns back around, and then falls. But falls what? Just falls at the same rate? No, it starts falling faster and faster. And then when it hits your hand, if it lands with the same magnitude of velocity that it hit before, so long as your hand is waiting at the same height. All of that is just free fall. Right? Now, when you combine both things, right, so that we already answered number four. Now, when you combine both things, let's think about what that does to number four. All right, let's think about everything that's going on here. What is happening with the X component? I'm going to do this in red. The X component throughout the whole thing. Is it changing? We just talked about it. No, the X direction. No, it's not. So that component is always the same, that vector of velocity is always the same, no matter what, right? Now if I draw the component of y velocity, right? I start with a bunch, but what happens the very next second with that velocity? Why does it get smaller? Because gravity starts acting on it. So let's draw gravity here, negative g, right? And then the next second then, that is going to be smaller. It's smaller. And two at the top, there is no y. It's just zero. Right? 
But does that mean that it has no velocity on top? No. No, because it still has the x. By the way, what's the total velocity here? I would have to combine with vector addition x and y every step of the way. So what's happened to the velocity in general? In general, what is happening to it? It's decreasing and it's also what? Changing direction the whole time, isn't it? Let's think about, we'll draw the result later. By the way, this is the kind of stuff you write down. You just don't sit there and listen because I'm going to give you stuff. What happens to the velocity here? It would be the same velocity that was up there except what? Negative. It's symmetric, right? It should be symmetric. I have one less. Uh, no, I don't. And then, now because it's symmetric, when I think about the total velocity the whole time, right, I have to combine the vectors. But what's happening to the velocity? The combined velocity the whole time. Is it just getting smaller? The vector? Oh, it's, changing direction. it's also changing direction. Over here, the resultant is just the x, right? And then, but how does this velocity compare to that one? It's going to be kind of what? Inverted. If you're saying? Right? Yeah. And that is what's happening. So the velocity is changing the whole time, both in magnitude and in direction. Are you with me? There's a second type of two-dimensional motion that we're going to talk about this year. It's called circular, uniform circular motion, right? Now, in uniform circular motion, right, this thing does not change velocity as it goes around a circle. So it's going around a circle with the same, at the same rate, but it's changing speed the whole time. Are you with me? That's because the acceleration in that example, right, is always to the center of the circle. It's always an acceleration to the center of the circle. We call this the centripetal acceleration. Now, how does that compare to what the way the acceleration of gravity looks? Does it change direction? No. In this type of motion, the acceleration is constant. But in that type of motion, the acceleration is changing direction constantly. You're with me. Which means the velocity does not change magnitude, but it changes only direction. Does that make sense? We talked about this earlier in the year, when the acceleration has, a, it has no component in the direction of the motion of the object, then the object does not speed up or slow down, instead it just turns, right? So this is why you create a shape that's not a circle. You create a parabolic shape because the acceleration is always perpendicular to the x component and always parallel or interparallel to the y component. All right. So. How would the maximum height of a projectile thrown on Earth uh, compare to the maximum height uh, it would reach if it thrown the same way on the moon? How about how long it would take to get to the top? So let's talk about those questions. But before we talk about that, when you talk about maximum height, when we talk about maximum air time, what, which, two, which of the two components is more interesting to look at in this case? The Y component or the X component? Think about it. Let's think about this another thing before I continue. If I throw a projectile at a 90 degree angle, what's my x component? Zero. If I throw it at a, z, at a zero degree angle, what's my y component? How far is the zero going to go? It's already on the ground, so it's not going to go far at all. How far is this going to go? The range? Zero. And we already talked about if I throw it at 30, right? When I throw it at 30, my x component is very very right big. But what happens to my microphone? It's small, which means I'm going to stay less time in the air, right? Even though I have more speed to go forward with. Are you with me? Now, this is another very important thing. The connection between the X and the Y component is time. You've got to remember this. It's important. Because whatever's happening in the Y direction it has to happen at the same time the Y direction thing is happening. Are you with me? So that's what connects both components. This is a secret for problems in projectile motion, even though this is not going to be part of your curriculum. It's not a quiz, but it's, we'll just do conceptual stuff. What's in here, right? But what I'm saying here, guys, let's think about this time. This throwing at 30 means I have less time than it would be here in the air. Why? Because what determines how long I stay in the air? Think about it. If I throw it at zero, how much time I stay in the air? Zero. If I throw it like this, Will it make the time, as I start going towards 90, does that increase or decrease the time it stays in the air? 
Does you do, do everybody understand that? We're good. It's important. Now, at the same time, is that as I increase this, is I have less and less x component, right? Until I get here and I get what? No x component. So if I have something like this, right? Well, I have a lot of time in the air, but my velocity in the x component is so small that I'm not going to get very far. If on the other hand I do it like this, I have a lot of x component to go far, but I don't have a lot of time in the air. And the result is the same. Are you following what I'm saying? That's why 45 is the best one. Because 45 degrees compromises both things, right? More air time and more speed. It's like the split between both of them. Are you, is that clear for everybody? Yeah. And that's why 30 and 6 is the same. We're going to talk more about that later. All right. So, how would the maximum height of a projectile thrown from the Earth? Now, remember, I just answered this question let me, well, out loud. So, what component is it more interesting to look at? If I'm trying to decide air time, what component is more interesting to look at? The X or the Y component, Susan? Y. The Y component. Now remember from free fall, anybody remember Orlando from free fall? There was a formula. If you don't have it, go to your notebooks right now and find it. What is the formula that determines how long something stays in the air? There was a formula for this. It was called T, top, T on the air. It's VO over G. All right. What about how long? How high something goes? But the air is Hold on, hold on. Do you have the formula for how high something goes? It's this is not for a square. That's not square. No, but that's not limit. Yes, two times. Two times V over G. Because V over G is just the time to get to the top. So the total time in the air is there, right? Now, H max is V O square over 2G, right? Now, what is this V O we're talking about here? It's the velocity with which it's launched in the y direction. So let's fix that formula from now on. Okay? This only is true. It's really V O Y over here. Right? What about Eva? No? This is very important, people, because if you just plug in, so let's say that for example they give you a number here for this VO. They give you 30. Right? And they give you an angle over here of 60 degrees. It's our your angle of launch. Right? And then you try to figure out how long it stays in the air. And so you just plug in here, 2 times 30 over G. You get it wrong. Because 30 is not VOY, what is it? It's just VO. It's the combined VO and VX. And from that combined, 30 has a part VO and a part VX. Are you with me? You have to split up and think just about the VOY. Right? Now how do I do that? Well, if these are two vectors, and that's my result, Right? I could redraw that back over here if I wanted to. This is my VOI, this is my VOX, and that's the angle that said 60 degrees, and I said this was going to be 30, right? Now let's think about it. How do I get that side? Isn't that the opposite side? So Trig says I multiply this, right, the hypotenuse, times the side of the angle to get the opposite side, right? Or I could say that VO times side of the angle equals VOI. Everybody clear on that? Good morning, teachers and students. Please pardon this interruption. At this time, will all students enrolled in Doral College please report to room 5? Anybody here? There are a bunch of you in here. All students enrolled you have? in Doral College. This is being recorded, right? So just catch the rest on YouTube, all right? Okay. Go, go. All right? Now, please uh, leave through that door so you don't interrupt us because you have to go off that way anyways, all right? Now, what does that mean? I square the 30, I square the 30 here, or, it, or am I squaring 30 side of the angle? Are you with me? Okay. Now, if I square this, how does that look like? That actually looks like this. It looks like VO, VO squared, side square of the angle, over 2G. Now, I want to make sure you guys don't get confused with something here. When you have the side square of the angle like that, what does that mean? Do you square the angle? Now, you do a sign readily, and you get the value that you get, and you square that value. Are you with me? So it's like, it would be the side of 30, or this is 60, which is half, and you square that, which would be 1.5. Are you with me, I'm saying? Okay, now, likewise, over here, the need, this needs to be VO sine of the angle, there's no square here, over G. 
And that's the formula I will really memorize, even for free fall problems. You know why? Because in free fall problems, you're throwing at 90 degrees, you just throw a 90 in here. What's the sign of 90? You know it's by heart. One, so it goes away. Right? You just multiply by one. So don't memorize that formula, or don't even learn that formula, don't even write it down. That's the right formula. Why do I say this? Because the day you plug in that 30 over there, you forget the angle, you're going to get it wrong. Are you with me? It's not 30. It's the component of 30 that's going up. If it happens to be 90 degrees, it's all of it. But if it's less than 90, it's only a part of it. Is that clear? Okay. So, to answer the question. Now that we have the formulas in the board, it should be easy to answer the questions, because now we just look at the formula and think about what would change if you were in the moon between those two things. So, Natalie Rios. So, if you are in the moon, will that thing go higher or less high? Now, am I, I'm not changing the velocity which I'm throwing or the angle. I'm just throwing in the moon. What, is that, what would that do to the height that the ball reaches? Yes, because this number is going to be smaller. The two labels. This number is smaller, which means it's making the whole thing uh, bigger. It makes sense also, conceptually, you expect the astronauts when they were jumping like this, right? It would look like they, they were like what? Not just slow motion, but it looked like they were like flying a little higher than they should have with a little jump like that. That's because their projectile motion was with less gravity. So how do I get something to go higher in a projectile motion? What the few, tell, me, tell me what thing I can do other than gravity to make the thing go higher, really. Higher. Yes. What about the angle? Like, focus on the y. Focus on y component. So what's the maximum height that I can get? At what angle would it be best? 90. Oh. Throw it straight up. Duh. What is another thing I can do to make it go higher? And a fiddle. I want to make the ball go higher. We already talked about, you gotta pay attention. If you like looking around, you're not going to know what's going on, what's going on. We already talked about making the angle 90, so this becomes 1. Because anything less than 90, the sign is not 1, and you're decreasing the, the, the number of this equation, right? We could also make this number smaller, like going to the moon or going to Mars, and it's going to go higher. What else can we do to make this thing go higher? This is easy conceptual stuff. How do we make something go higher? Sorry? Say it. The acceleration with which you throw it. <coughs> what you mean is the velocity that you throw it. Once you throw it, it's got no acceleration left, right? Okay, but that's it. Give her up the lady. Don't be scared of getting things wrong here, okay? Everybody here is just a student. All right? Along the same lines, if I was in the moon and I threw the ball up, so I'm throwing, if I throw the ruler up, and it took five seconds, for the for one second for the ruler to get back to my hand. If I was in the moon where gravity is one six of the Earth's gravity, how much? How many seconds would it take to get my hand? It's an equation. Think about it. So the time in the Earth was one second. How long would it take in the moon if this number is one six of that number? Six seconds. It will be six times slower because you are decreasing g by a factor of six, which means you're making the whole thing six times bigger. It's like you're putting a one six in the denominator, which is like multiplying top by six. Is everybody clear on that? Okay. All right, so where is she? In the bathroom. All right, in this? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what is the horizontal and vertical component of the velocity like at the top of the projectile motion? So you got two points here. We already answered this question, so you just get it right. What is the horizontal component of velocity like? Constant. And it will have the same speed as it had at the start, right? Good. What about the y component at the top? Yes, it'll be zero. Two labels. Very good. Now, how about the acceleration at the top? There was an equation. The answer was? Yes, gravity. All right, acceleration of gravity. Stefan? Lautaro? Okay. Right. Now about, how about right before getting to the top? What's the acceleration of gravity like? Talking about acceleration. 
See? So at the top, he said it was his gravity, right? Yeah. What about right before it gains the top? What's the acceleration like? Yeah. I'm talking about the acceleration. The acceleration is decreasing. So as you in increasing. So as you get to the top, gravity is working stronger. Pay attention to the question I'm asking. I'm not asking what's happening to the velocity. I'm asking about acceleration. Acceleration is the rate at which velocity is changing. Okay? So as you launch the ball, what is the acceleration acting on that ball? As you launch the ball? Gravity. Gravity. As you get to the top, what's the acceleration? Gravity. Right before it gets to the top, what's the acceleration? Gravity. After the top, what's the acceleration? Gravity. Do you get it? Gravity. What is the only acceleration? Gravity. Is it, does it change? Oh, that it goes from oh, to negative. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's always negative. See, it doesn't. It, 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 it's because I'm, I'm, for now, it doesn't change. Later in the year, we'll talk about something else. All right. The gravity actually gets weaker as you go away from the ground. So check because it, and gravity is stronger when things are close. As you separate, it gets weaker. So technically, the higher you go, the weaker gravity gets. Right? But if we're talking about launching a tennis ball 20 feet up in the air, that's negligible difference. Are you with me what I'm saying? But if I go to the top of Mount Everest, there will be less, less gravity. It's enough that I can lose a few pounds. Now, of course, you still have the same mass, but it'll be lighter. Yes? What's his name? Lautaro? Lautaro. Yeah, like Centauros, like a centaur, except with an L. Lautaro. Oh, Larry. What does it mean, Larry? What? what does it mean, mean? <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, the Latin root of it. Lauta probably means glory. Where's the street? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the street? 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 Where's and it, it, they used to put laurels on the on the laurels on those things that the ranged race that they were the, on the on the winners of sporting events and stuff like that. And that's the same root, the loud. And we I went to bet that it means the glorified one. Look it up. All right. So yes. Sorry. Yeah. I did a tennis. Second grade? Yes. Right, yes. Okay, cool. Thanks. Then you see. <laughs> Next one. Shh. Let's get out of okay, with this. We already finished almost all of this anyway. Now, what is the average velocity between launch and landing of a projectile? Oh, this is a really good one. All right. So I'm going to launch something at an angle other than 90. Okay, an angle other than let's do actually let's start at 90 first. Average velocity of the whole projectile motion. Are you with me? So I launched at a 90 degree angle. So the average velocity. Now remember, is this accelerating? How do I do average velocity? Average velocity is velocity one plus velocity two divided by two for anything that's accelerating. When it's not accelerating, it's just delta x over delta t. Are you with me? Yes? Okay. Now let's think about it. What's the velocity you want here? Let's say I throw it with 30 meters per second. It's 30 positive. By the time it gets back down, it's 30 negative. So it'll be 30 positive plus 30 negative, which is zero. So what's the average velocity? Even if you use that formula, you go and you come back where you started. It's zero. Now if you don't use a 90 degree angle, do you have a zero displacement? No. You have x displacement. Do you have y displacement? No, because you'll, you'll launch from here and you'll land from the same spot, right? But you can't have what? Horizontal displacement. Therefore, the average velocity will still be something, right? So any angle other than 90, what is the average velocity? Think about it. At 90, what's the average velocity? So what is the average velocity in the y direction? Always zero. What about the x direction? What's happening to it? Is it changing ever? So what is the average velocity at the x direction? 
the same thing as the velocity? No. Right. If you never change the velocity, the average is the average with which the velocity with which you'll be moving. Right? So let me think about it. If I'm going from here to Orlando at 60 miles an hour the whole time, what's my average velocity going to Orlando? Right. So in the x direction, what's the average velocity? Always the same. Now, so in the y direction, is there an average velocity? No. But if I have x and y, what's going to be my average velocity then? Just of the x. Are you with me? I'm saying the x component will be the thing. Very good. So, if you oh, I like this one. If you want a ball to land on your hand while running forward, right? Should you throw it ahead of you or straight up? Straight up. Oh no! Oh no! Are you answering? Straight, straight up. Why? Exactly. So if I'm running with the ball, the ball's already running with me, right? Are you with me? So when I okay, let's try it. They have a video on the car. They have a video on the car. Yeah. Okay. Is the ball right there? Is it in the NBA? Is it in the NBA? No, we don't need a ball. They have that on the video. Yeah. Oh my god. Can you untangle this for me? Oh my god. Well, she's working on that. Wait. Let's talk about something else. Oh, oh. <laughs> Just take the, the, the thread away, okay? Well, well, she untangles that. Shh. Right. Now. And he already did the right explanation. Give the men three Legos. Yes. Yes, Orlando. There would be the yes. Right? Not yet the red. Because let's think about it, though. Let's think about it. If I'm throwing at an angle, whatever velocity I have in the Y component, I will have the same thing at the end. And the, are you with me? So in the Y direction, it will always cancel out, and you have no average velocity in the Y direction, ever. Unless, of course, you don't land the same height. Right? Is, is the pin still attached to it? No, but it's the pin, because it was a pin attached to it originally. No. Because what we need is we need a... That sucks. Let's see. Invent something. Diver. Sign. Yes. Now, what was I? Number eight, nine? Eight. Using a bomb launch for a plane. Shh. Explain how the parabolic nature of a projectile motion can be routed to the observer. So I'm throwing a bomb from a plane. Bomb. Is that projectile motion? You see a bomb? A bomb yes. from a plane. Yes. Is that projectile motion? Because the plane is going forward. Yes. It's going to let it go. It's going to do the whole yeah. right, parabolic thing. But is that relative to the observer? Yes. Yeah. Right, you're saying yes. Why is it relative to the observer? Exactly. So the observer is moving with the speed of the plane. He's just going to see the ball falling plus straight out, including the people who are open the gate of the plane. It will look as if what? It's falling right behind it. In real life, it doesn't look like that, though, because air resistance. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, it, but it, technically, technically, it should be. Did you do it? Okay, so it should kind of work. Let's see. Just because I'm, I'm tied to the knot. Oh, you tied the knot? I'm tied the knot in the center. Aww. Right? <laughs> so, put the paper. That's what she said. Oh. Do I get that one? That's also in the wrong hole. Is it? Oh, that's what she said. He's like, I'm raking it up. All right. All right. All right. Is it ready? Oh, somebody catch it, please. Don't let it fall. I feel like this is not It is going to work. Now, if he's right, it's supposed to land what? Inside of it. Let's see. Oh, 
Find the ball. I told you to find the ball. Guys, look around. Seriously, find the ball. It's right there. Uh, why are you oh. yelling? Oh. I'm excited. Am I supposed to catch it again? Side. Uh, either you or one, you need to find the other side catch. Let's see if it works. Yeah, Bianca, I guess. Bianca. Again. I know why it didn't work. Watch it, you're going to tell me why it didn't work. If it doesn't work, don't say it. If it doesn't work, I want you to tell me why it didn't work. It won't work this time because I'm going to do something different. But last time it didn't work for something else or some other reason. Well, you tell me why it didn't work. It didn't work this time either. I can tell you why it didn't work. I can tell you why it didn't work. It's going in a straight line. Yeah. It's not that. It was also not going in a straight line. It was something else. Watch it. Ooh, the ball does whatever the cards do when the ball takes. It's something, uh, oh, hint, it's something that happens after the ball launches. That's going or right at the moment Here the ball launches. It's not air resistance. Watch it. Watch the card, not the ball. I'm pulling you down. So in order for this to, I'm spinning down the card. In order for it to work, I have to put it just, like, right just well, barely. Like, it's own, so you're not pulling on it. Yeah, you don't want to pull on it. That was really bad. You want to pull on it. Oh, 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 that hurts. I don't know what you is. That's what you need. You should grab it. Yeah, you should grab it shorter. Wait, you just play it Oh, no, I like it longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's dead! Alright, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, okay. I don't... Uh, <laughs> it's still in too tight. Uh, she's dead. 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 Uh, no, it's a rim shot. That's right. Oh! 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 Oh!
the lab that's called oh should be lab. Look it up. It's on the under partisan activities for this topic. Read it, plan it ahead of time. With A, be smart. Put the write up ahead of time for a couple of the parts to get the points. All right, guys. See you next time. Don't do anything to make a mouth proud. Uh,